Hey, what's up? Um, this is at one with zero, and welcome to our neighborhood. Um, today, I'm going to be looking at uh, proof theory. Um, I've been working on a document for a while now. It's a basic proof theory, um, which has been done before, so I'm not... I'm aware that I'm not like inventing the wheel here. <clears throat> um, so I have this document here. You can look at it. Um, so, <coughs> um, a while back I um, was working on what I called Skynet. Now Skynet is an automated theorem prover that produces brute force proofs. So basically, in an attempt to prove a theorem, Skynet will would explore all possible consequences of the axioms and then just check is the theorem among that list or not. Well, that sounds simple, but um, I calculated that even if your proof of a first order logic statement, like an epsilon delta definition limit, um, if you, how many proofs of length 10 are there? There's about 10 to the 311 proofs of length 10. And that's if you kind of count seemingly different things but with with ex the exact same structure like um like a dummy variable it's a good example of that um anyway um i have many conjectures and very few proofs and that is probably why it's not published yet um I'm thinking that kind of saying these out loud might sort of uh, help me think through them. Um, Sorry, um, so there's three statements here. Um, you can kind of see them, I think. Um, yeah. Um, so the first statement is that alpha is proved in step N of Skynet starting with axioms gamma um that's the first statement the second statement is alpha has a length n proof and statement three is the shortest proofs of alpha do not exceed n and the conjecture is those three statements are equivalent and i've proved that two is equivalent to three one is equivalent to two and one is, sorry no, I didn't prove that yet. One implies two and one implies three. So I need two implies one. Um, that would do it, I think. Two implies one. Just three, two implies one. So then, what do I actually need? I've already proved, like, on paper somewhere, that why statements two and three are equivalent 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 3. I want that they're all equivalent, all three. So, um, that, with that, if I could prove that, or if it's, I don't even know if it's true, but if I can prove it, um, then it kind of 
gives you a sense for what Skynet is actually doing. Um, so if, if Alpha is in the nth, uh, the nth sub Skynet, I guess you could call it, um, then Alpha has a length n proof. So it's true and it has a length n proof. So you don't have to look for proofs that are exceeding length n. And then the shortest proofs of alpha, there might just be one shortest proof, there might be several shortest proofs. Um, it does not exceed n. So I think, so if 2 implies 3 and 3 implies 2, 1 implies 2 and 1 implies 3, we want 2 implies 1. Yeah, 2 implies 1 would finish it. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to prove a conjecture. Um, I have three statements, one related to Skynet, which is my automated theorem prover that brute forces everything. Um, and, and I learned that um, if you allow 10 steps in a proof, which is not very many, um, there are already one Google cubed um, different proofs. A lot of them will lead to the same theorem, so it's less than that, but um, if you're going to search for all theorems of whose proof is length 10 or fewer, um, it's basically a Google cubed, which is like 10 to the 300 power, um, different proofs of length 10. So, um, that's a lot. So I like, I would estimate that the proof of the modularity theorem, which was used to prove from all last theorem, um, that was probably at least 4,000 steps and so, it, you know, trying to even consider putting that on an automated theorem prover, um, it would be literally insane to try to do that. There'd be, you know, it's like 10, so it's in 10 steps, it's a Google cubed already, number of different proofs it could be. Um, with 4,000, I can't really even estimate like what that would be very large number <laughs> you, I mean it's so large that like our computers don't even come close to making a dent in the calculation so uh, Skynet is therefore the slowest automated theorem prover in existence and I can prove that <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if that's true. Maybe I'll work on it later. So I'll write down that I want to use 2 implies 1. Uh, this is how I roll. So I need 2 implies 1. Okay. And then that'll be true. Remember, I was, I was trying to prove that three statements are equivalent. Um, <clears throat> So that's that. And then um, the next conjecture that I wanted to talk, kind of like work through. Um, so I didn't prove the, the first conjecture. I'm putting it on the shelf for now. Uh, now I need no, now I know what I need is to just prove two implies one, and then all three will be equivalent. Because you have so if you have statements like one, two, three in a triangle. I have that 2 and 3 are equivalent, I have that 1 implies 2, and I have that 1 implies 3, but I don't know if anything implies 1. So I need 2 implies 1 or one, or that 3 implies 1, but now I, or, so I guess I could say or if 3 implies 1. Okay. 
So the next conjecture is about Skynet. Um, so the next conjecture is, uh, if, so if you take the set of the axioms and call that gamma, um, in this conjecture, I'm, I am attempting to prove two statements that are very much related. One is that um, the set of theorems that Skynet proves is a superset of gamma. Okay, so every axiom is implied by Skynet, or proved by Skynet, I should say. <coughs> and the set of theorems proved by Skynet <coughs> is a subset of the set of all theorems proved from gamma. So that's a that's actually an <clears throat> two statements in itself. So there's three statements. One is that gamma the axioms is a subset of the set of the uh, theorems that Skynet proves and that is a subset of the set of all theorems. And I want to show that uh, the set of theorems that Skynet proves is closed under inference rules. And when I say closed under inference rules, what that means is um, if you have something um, that's a theorem and you apply any inference rule to that, the result is a theorem also. That's what closed under inference rules means. Don't ask me why they call it that. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> they do. Um, now that was the one that where, because I have some conjectures where I already know like how they're going to be proved, but some of my conjectures I I don't know how they're going to be proved yet, um, and what I'm probably going to do is remove the ones I can't prove and then maybe make a sequel paper later. I'd rather just get it all in here. Um, that way I can move on to something else. Now the bigger in the bigger picture, that theorem, that theorem or sorry, that conjecture that I just uh, read off, that fits nicely with um, something earlier in my paper, which I haven't uh, told you about yet. Um, so it says that so the the set of theorems that Skynet proves, let's just call that sigma of gamma, okay? Um, the set of proofs that Skynet proves is going to be called sigma of gamma. It's a lowercase sigma, by the way, not upper. Up, upper sigma looks like like a three, you know, backwards three. Um, but lowercase sigma looks like an O with a cross on the top. And sigma of gamma <clears throat> contains gamma, that means every axiom is proved by Skynet, which so it's in sigma of gamma. And so that, that part's kind of obvious because the first line or the first output of Skynet is all the axioms. So all the axioms are, are contained in S of one so, and, and sigma is the union of all of this S's. So, it's, it, that, that's probably the only obvious to me part of the conjecture. And then sigma of gamma is the subset of the set of all theorems. In other words, everything in sigma of gamma is a theorem. And, uh, is that the one that I struggled with? Um,
بهزی کریکان What is wrong? <laughs> yeah.